Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Neil Joshi. Welcome to you to series Learn Radiology with Dr. Neil Joshi. Today's topic is based on MRI physics. However, it is on MRI contrast. So we are going to see basically the indication, contraindications of contrast. What are the types of contrast? How a contrast acts? And when it is given? and which are the sequences taken after the contrast. So, let us get going to the topic MRI physics simplified form for MRI contrast. To start with are disclosure, acknowledgement and disclaimers. All the material which we are using in this lecture is from our department. It is coming on for many years and we use it for many batches to teach them. However, still there is some material which we have borrowed from the net. We have confirmed that it is royalty free. However, still we thank all of them from whom we have got this material because it is going to be used for teaching purpose only and not for commercial purpose. It is a purely educational channel. So, let us get going to the today's topic MRI contrast. There are three broad kind of contrast available for MRI, IV that is oral and per rectal. Usually what we are versed with is the IV contrast. It is most of the time a contrast in MRI means a IV gadolinium. Gadolinium contrast medium which is given by intravenous injection through a small needle into the vein is called as IV contrast injection or IV MRI contrast. Not we are going to see what are the effects of it, what are the other types, whether they are used, whether they are required. So, first is the bowel contrast agent may be positive or negative depending on whether they enhances or suppresses intraluminal signals. Hyper or smaller agents uh, that is mainly volumetric, draw water into the uh, bowel used for MR enterography. There are very less indication, very specific centers are doing it and they are rarely used. Now, second is ferrite agents that is the gastromark that is the commercial preparation available which suppresses bowel contrast due to strong T2 reflections. These are used only with specific indications and not as a routine. Routinely IV contrast means IV gadolinium. Now, gadolinium chelates are the only widely used MR contrast medium. Neither the gadolinium nor the protein in the chelated form are imaged. The effect of gadolinium is to alter the rotation frequency of the water molecules and it is still the water protons that contribute to the signals. So, these paramagnetic substances make a contrast, but the contrast is basically made again by the hydrogen protons. Since the extracellular compartment where the gadolinium goes, there is abundant water and proteins. Some of the water is interacting with the protein and thus has a short T1. This we have seen in detail when we discuss a T1 sequence. Most of it is still the free water, not nearly any protein and thus with a very long T1. The gadolinium has 7 unpaired electron which can interact with the water protons and alter their rotation helping to exchange energy. Basically, this is the same mechanism as water interaction with proteins but just more efficiently. Depending on the precise structure of the gadolinium chelates, the ability to bind water proteins to influence on rotation speed may be slightly different and the relativity efficiency of the different gadolinium contrast agents can be different. Gadolinium chelates also are affecting T2 to some extent. In this diagram, we have shown how a molecule looks like, but this is a diagrammatic presentation. Now, what are the magnetic properties? The majority of MRI contrast agents are either paramagnetic that is gadolinium ions 
complexes or supermagnetic that is iron oxide magnetite particles the paramagnetic contrast agents are made from this proposium that is dy designated as or the lithium metal gadolinium that is called gd3 or the transition metal manganese that is short form as mn and possesses water soluble properties commonly selected metal atom used in a mri contrast agent is the lithium ion gadolinium as it possesses the high magnetic momentum and is the most suitable ion ion with unpaired electron due to presence of unpaired electrons this contrast agent possesses paramagnetic properties now this is in more detail let us come to magnetic properties of gadolinium gadolinium has seven this prosium has four and manganese has five unpaired electrons so out of these you will see that gadolinium has maximum that is seven contrast agent containing gadolinium shortens the t1 that is longitudinal and t2 or transfers relaxation time of the neighboring water protons this effect increases the signal intensity of t1 weighted images and reduces the signal's intensity of t2 weighted images now magnetic properties of the gadolinium are continued t1 shortening occurs at lower gadolinium concentration whereas t2 shortening occurs at higher gadolinium concentration which is of limited clinical use due to its increased risk of toxicity so higher concentration gadolinium are not used therefore in conventional clinical practice t1 is evaluated after the administration of extracellular agents contrast agent containing transitional metal ions such as high spin manganese and supermagnetic iron oxide such as iron oxide which affects the t2 relaxation strongly now this is the mri machine then you can see the contrast bottle now before scan start the radiologist or a specialist or trained technician who is attending the mri will decide on the basis of clinical examination the findings of the plain mri whether gadolinium injection is required or not whether it indicated or not or whether the patient side there are any contraindication sometime it is decided after seeing the plain mri or after consulting the referring specialist neurologist detailed clinical history and any implant has already been taken before starting plain mri so there is it is just needless to say that it is a prerequisites of the gadolinium because patient is already there the plain scan already has been done then we have to ensure that there is no risk from strong magnetic field to the of the scanner confirm about contraindication that is the pregnancy allergies severe kidney diseases and contra and this contrast has got a large safety margin and very few reactions are noted till today in a literature before mri all the precautions all the safety measures all the contraindication are extensively covered in some other topic so we have to take precautions about all that thing and we have to see that patient do not have anything that will create problem in mri for patient or in the imaging that is it will create artifacts if gadolinium is not given after such a recommendation patient has may have to do another uh, scan so best is patient should listen he should get gadolinium scan done and allow radiologist to give the best possible and a accurate result now what are the type of reaction though rare minor or non significant 
they can occur they may be treated or they may not be treated like headache nausea the same as that of the any other contrast nothing special only thing here they are less then allergy like reaction include itchy skin rashes which may be self limiting or which may settle down with some medications major reactions in anaphylaxis respiratory impairment are extremely low though reported in literature but all the radiology departments are well equipped for all these reactions they have got trained staff and all the necessary equipment along with them to ensure that there will not be any cardio respiratory problem to the patient and patient will have safe injection of contrast and radiologist will have a good diagnostic opportunity this is one of a serious complication which is recorded in some of the patient that is a nephrogenic systemic fibrosis it is a rare debilitating disease resulting in skin contractures or localized skin itching and tightening and internal organ damage please note this is rare number 1 and number 2 it is always occurring when there is some predisposing disease it has occurred with some gadolinium best contraindicated media in minority of patient with pre existing severe renal functional abnormalities so if you can confirm it before you can be assured that there will not be this disease to the patient there are some forms of gadolinium contrast available for low risk in these such type of patient they are less nephrotoxic though nephrotoxicity of gadolinium is not been reported except in these patients where there is in some predisposing disease however still there are safer medias available which can be used for patient with impaired renal function or renal toxicity if they want to be 100% sure a pregnancy and possible pregnancy either a patient is pregnant or there is a possibility of pregnancy yes in first three months of pregnancy there are maybe some countries like uh, usa where it is contraindicated but by and large in second and third trimester there are no contraindication and one of the investigation for anomaly scan is mri so often mri stands as the not first is of course ultrasound but second is mri now in breastfeeding mothers it is safe to continue normal feeding after gadolinium contrast medium has been injected there is a possibility of tiny particles in the breast milk which may be swallowed by the child but be sure that this will be 1 in 1000 too less and they will not cause any problem to the baby they are not in a toxicity dose however these are not harmful be assured of it since the amount of gadolinium swallowed by baby will be too small these are some commercial preparations uh, we can uh, enlist them like magnavist multi hands omni scan dotaram pro hands gadavist yovist and uve now if you observe carefully not the change in name of a uh, drug but t1 and t2 relatively how they affect then you will know that definitely different contrast act in different ways and there are certain positivity and negativity it has to be borne in mind when you are planning to give a contrast now after this extensive discussion let us come to a take home messages gadolinium contrast media consist of complex molecule arranged of atoms held together by a chemical bond the chemical bond are made between the gadolinium ion and the carrier molecule a chelating agent binds gadolinium ions the chelating agent prevent the toxicity of gadolinium while maintaining the contrast properties intact different brand of gadolinium contrast medium are used in different chelating molecules and we have also seen that there are special contrast available if nephrotoxicity is known 
The contrast medium is injected intravenously as a part of an MRI scan and it is eliminated through the body and kidneys unnoticeably. With that, we are coming to end of the lecture. I thank you for giving me your valuable time. Do visit our website for comprehensive detail over same topic, over many other topic. There are lectures covering all branches of uh, diagnostic radiology for the medical student, for the technologist, that is the medical imaging technology students and also for those who are interested in knowing radiology. With that, let's say goodbye and we'll meet again in the next lecture.